and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming out today for this uh, wonderful show. The radio troupe is here with us today. My name is Desi Vasquez. I'm a social programming director here at the Oak Park Arms. If any of you are interested in uh, touring the building, please let me know. I'd be happy to facilitate a tour for you. But right now, I'd like you to give the uh, radio broadcast a very warm welcome. Ben Dooley will tell you more about today's program. Thank you very much. All right. Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Those Thrilling Days of Yesteryear, a live recreation of some of your favorite shows from the golden age of radio. Now, what happens when you take a legendary dramatic stage actress and you partner her with a wisecracking vaudevillian comedian? You throw in a gorgeous Italian opera singer and a beautiful young soprano, three very striking actors from a war picture, a simple band leader, and then toss in a troublemaking child and her barely tolerant daddy. Well, you get the big show. An exciting variety radio show from the 50s that featured a wide range of entertainment of comedy, music, and drama, something for everyone. And this was really, it, it, this happened in the 1950s, this was radio's answer to try to win back all of the fans who were going towards television. And so they hired Tulula Bankhead to head up and call in all of her friends and more, and they brought the best of Hollywood for 90 minutes. Uh, every uh, once a week. And so this uh, episode originally aired back in November 12, 1950. And here you will follow, uh, you will join host Tulula Baghead as she faces off with Groucho Marx as she tries to get through the show with some sense of dignity intact. You'll follow Baby Snooks as she wanders into Tulula's dressing room. And you'll swoon as Ezio Pinza. Uh, sings his lovely ballads, and delight as Jane Powell sings her sweet, beautiful love song. You'll follow the drama as John Agar, Frank Lovejoy, and David Bryan recreate their memorable roles from the adaptation of their film, Breakthrough, which was very popular in the day. And enjoy the whole gang as they parody that classic game show, You Bet Your Life. This is fun for the whole family, and a show this big can only have one name, The Big Show. Uh, by the way, um, behind the scenes for this particular episode, Groucho and Tallulah did not get along at all. In fact, one of our lovely uh, radio historians, Craig, uh, had found that during the rehearsal for the big show, the directors were having stopwatch trouble. The program was running too long. Tallulah, true to the flamboyant tradition of the temperamental prima donna, exploded each time her lines were trimmed. Groucho Marx watched all this from the sidelines. At last, in the calm which followed one of Tallulah's outbursts, he was heard to observe, quite a production, eh? This, uh, this timing of the shrew. <laughs> You'll hear jokes like that, and more, along with wonderful music, great drama, comedy, some sound effects, and a fantastic time with classic Hollywood stars doing their best. And we'll do our best to recreate as much as we can as they did back then. So while you are listening, you might pretend that you are one of those who had the fortune of being in that live studio audience as they watch their favorite performers do their thing. Or perhaps you might just wish to sit back, close your eyes, and imagine that you are sitting in your living room in front of the old Philco radio, anxiously awaiting for your favorite show to begin. So join us now as we take you back to those thrilling days of yesteryear. <laughs> by some of the biggest names in show business. For the next hour and 30 minutes, this program will present in person such bright stars as... Manny Rice. Groucho Marx. Ezio Pinza. Jane Powell. Henry Stafford. David Bryan. John Agar. Frank Lovejoy. Jimmy Wallington. Meredith Wilson. And my name, darling, is Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> The Big Show! The Big Show, 90 minutes with the most scintillating personalities of the entertainment world. Brought to you this Sunday 
and every Sunday at the same time as the Sunday feature of Five Show Festival, NBC star-studded five-night-a-week program extravaganza. Tonight's big show is presenting such top-flight stars as Fanny Bryce, Groucho Marx, Ezio Pinza, Jane Powell, Henley Stafford, David Bryan, John Hagar, Frank Lovejoy, and Meredith Wilson. And here is your hostess, the glamorous, unpredictable, Tallulah Bankhead. second of our series of star-studded programs. Last week, New York. This week, Hollywood. I just want to say one thing about our big show and then we'll forget about it. We loved your letters and we'd like to have you continue writing us. I'm most grateful for the comments of the press and public and I want to say in all humility that I couldn't have possibly lived up to the notices if it hadn't been for my material. Happy Carnegie made me a gorgeous gown of the finest material she could find. As to the comments of some of my friends who thought I was nervous on the first show, well, I want to say that I wasn't the lippy's nervous. <clears throat> well, I was as cool and as calm as I am right now. <laughs> but so much for the first show. You just heard the names of the stars on this week's show, and you think that's all there is, sweethearts? <laughs> I fooled you, didn't I? You thought I was going to say, darlings. Well, just listen to this lineup next week. Bob Hope, Jimmy Durante, Eddie Cantor, Jose Ferrer, Perry Como, Mindy Carson, nothing but the cream of show business. That's NBC, nothing but cream. I guess you think we're aiming rather high, but we always try to hit our marks. Not your marks, that's me. Well, look who's here. Oh, who are you? Groucho Marx. You're Groucho Marx? I always thought I was Groucho Marx. Oh, come now, I'm not Groucho. You know who I am, don't you? I'll take a wild guess. Chico? No, sweetheart. Papa? No, darling. Am I warm? No, darling. You know, I've had that same complaint lately from all women. <laughs> My name is Tallulah. A phony name if I ever heard one. Tallulah Bankhead Groucho. Oh, the Ruler Bankhead Groucho. <laughs> oh, you tickle me. That's a date. What are you doing after the show? I have a dinner engagement. Do you believe in short engagements? I have an appointment after the show. What are you doing during the show? I'm pretty busy during this show, my pet. This is an hour and a half program, you know. An hour and a half? Mm-hmm. That's a rather odd figure, isn't it? <laughs> well, yes. Speaking of odd figures, what are you doing after the show? Well, darling, I'm having a man for dinner. That's the main course. What are you doing for dessert? <laughs> well, we're going to Ciro's for dinner. We're having pheasant under glass. Mm. You wouldn't consider a peasant under glasses. <laughs> now look here, my sweet, I'm getting a little bit fed up. And you haven't even had dinner yet. <sighs> What's the use? You're incorrigible. I'll accept that, but who are you? I'm a fan of yours, Groucho, and I've always adored you. How can you say that? We haven't even been out together. What are you doing after the show? I told you I'm busy. How about before the show? Before the show, I had a malted milk. You mind if I joined you? I'm trying to tell you as gently as I can, I can't see you before, during, or after the show. Well, now that you've given me the brush, how about you and me going out and painting the town red? <laughs> and you're just the one to do it, aren't you, Carl? Carl? I'm Groucho Marx. Mm -hmm. And now, if you don't mind, I'd like to get on with the show. Go right ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, we have so many stars on our program. Tallulah. He's an old Pullman car named Tallulah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have so many stars on our program. And had quite a caboose. Ladies and gentlemen. Tallulah, indeed. We have so many stars on our program. Obviously, this woman is an imposter. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we have so many stars on our program. Who sponsors this program? We have no sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen. No sponsor? No, it's sustaining. Ladies and gentlemen. How can you sustain yourself without a sponsor? We have so many stars on this no show. No sponsor. What do my friends think? Ladies and gentlemen. If I had any friends. Ladies and gentlemen. If they could think. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have so many stars on this program. How can they afford it without any sponsor? I bet the rent here alone must be about $85 a month. Ladies and gentlemen, please. I mean, Groucho, please. But how can a big hour and a half program like this go on with all these big stars without a sponsor? We'll give it some class. We'll have it sponsored by the, uh, by the Prevo Company. 
Groucho, what is the Plevo Company? Who cares? There must be a company named Plevo, and if there is, we'll send them a bill for it. Now, who are you trying to introduce? <sighs> Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. Okay, commercial. Ladies and gentlemen, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra are brought to you by the Plevo Company, America's <laughs> foremost manufacturer. The Plevo Company has been manufacturing foremost for years. Try a foremost, or better still, try the large economy size, the five most. Now, remember, when using foremost, use caution. Caution comes in six delicious flavors. So, ladies, if foremost persists, see your doctor. If your doctor persists, use caution. Mm. And now we interrupt this commercial to bring you the show. Meredith, your music is, as usual, divine. Thank you. You know, Miss Bankin, I was thinking about the first time I ever saw Groucho Marx. It was 20 years ago. Let's keep it that way, shall we? Well, uh, I guess you've forgotten, Mr. Marx, but it was back in Mason City, Iowa, my hometown. You and your brothers played there one night. You remember the village square? Was that you? Well, I'm glad to see you again, then. <laughs> Meredith, sweet, we have a big show to do here. Well, I just wanted to tell Mr. Marx about a funny thing that happened when Mr. Marx played there that night. I went to see him with my girl. I was never with your girl. It must have been Harbo. No, you don't understand. I was with my girl. And I was with Harpo? No, you, you don't understand. I came to see your show with my girl. Your girl was in my show? Groucho, will you please let him get on with that nauseating little story? Thank you, Miss Bankhead. Because a very funny thing happened that night when I came to see the show with my girl. Her name was Rini. She later became Mrs. Wilson. That's very funny. Groucho, there's nothing funny about it, and you know it. I know it, you know it, but does he know it? Oh, if you think that's funny, wait till I get to the funny part. You'll notify us when you get to it, won't you? A postcard will do. Oh, oh I'll telegraph. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Well, we got to the theater, and no sooner had we got seated when Rini, she later became Mrs. Wilson, she asked me to get her a box of confection. So I went into the lobby to get it. And when I got back, some other man was sitting in my seat next to Rini, who later became Mrs. Wilson. So I said to him, I says, I believe you're sitting in the wrong place. And he looked at his ticket stub, and sure enough, he was sitting in the wrong seat. He had the third seat in row G, and I had the third seat in row E. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> you know, you know, Mrs. Wilson and I often have a good laugh about this when we think of it. You know what, Miss Tolula? <laughs> Meredith, I'm sure it's quite all right for you and Mrs. Wilson to enjoy these riotous laughs in the sanctity of your own home. But we have a distinguished class of actors ready to go on with an exciting excerpt from the new Warner picture, Breakthrough. And to bring it to you, we have the stars of the picture, David Bryan, John Agar, and Frank Lovejoy. Wait a minute, you can't have a cast like that sustaining. Oh, no, not again. Come on, sir. This program is brought to you by the Plevo Company, makers of that famous after-dinner motor oil. <laughs> Fifty years ago today, the Plevo Company opened its doors to the public. And today, just as it was 50 years ago, it is November 12th. <laughs> Plevo will serve you efficiently. It will serve you promptly. Try Plevo. It'll serve you right. Yesterday was November the 11th, Armistice Day. Today, lest we forget, may the same thoughts and memories be with us. For the story of World War II, the story of all history, is the story of men. You knew the men. They came from your family, your street, your town. Warner Brothers and their new film, Breakthrough, have brought to the screen with great power a portrait of men at war. Here are David Bryan as Captain Hale, John Agar as young Lieutenant Joe Mallory, and Frank Lovejoy. A sudden bell. My name is Bell. My unit was in England training. We knew the big push was coming somewhere, sometime. But in the middle of the big war, there was a little war. A war of nerves between Captain Hale and Shave Tail Lieutenant Joe Mallory. Lieutenant Mallory, good morning, sir. Well, I suppose you think you're a hero for saving Finley's life today in battle practice. I know I should have used a red flare for ceasefire and sir, but I saw Finley lying there. I knew the Bangalore torpedo was about to go off. And Knock I... it off, Mallory. Yes, sir. One guy. For one guy, you risked the lives of every other man in the platoon. 
You were supposed to shoot the red flare to stop the covering fire. If Sergeant Bell hadn't used the red flare, if he had more sense than you've got, every guy would have stood up and been gut shot by our own machine guns. Have you ever thought of that, Lieutenant Mallory? Well, yes, sir, Captain. You're in attention, Mallory. Oh, you look great on paper. Great. But when the chips are down, you don't look good on paper. I ought to reclassify you and send you back to where you came from. There's no time. No time. The big one's coming up and I get you. Mallory? Yes, sir? The men you're commanding. That was my platoon. I fought those guys over Africa and through Sicily. With leadership, it's the best rifle platoon in the Army, and I ain't gonna let no second guesser follow up. Is that clear, Mallory? Yes, sir. I'm keeping a sharp eye on you. You understand? You follow up again by so much as a whisker, and I'll feed you to the birds. Fort Benning. All right, dismissed. Right then, the lieutenant proved that he had good sense, even if he was only a shave tail, because he went out and hunted up his sergeant, which just happened to be me, who found me down in the village in a pub. <laughs> I want to thank you for shooting off that flare, sergeant. It's all right, lieutenant. And the old man just let me have it good. He always had tough. Well, the old man isn't tough, Lieutenant. Get down under that rough crust and he's sentimental. You know what I mean? Well, uh, maybe you're right, Sarge. But so far, that's a side of him I haven't seen yet. And the Lieutenant didn't see that side of Captain Hale for some time. It was a lot later than any of us thought, and the old man got rougher. That's the way things went. Real rough right up until May 30th, 1944. And then, no more training. They told us they were going to give us a little ocean trip. Yep, right across the channels of France. All hands set watch on condition one. All hands set watch on condition one. What's the matter with that? You scared? Well, yes, sir, Captain Haley. It's just that I think... No need to apologize. So am I. You? After all the battles you've been in? Lieutenant, you're sort of scared because you don't know what it's going to be like. I know what it's going to be like, and I'm plenty scared. There's only one thing I can tell you. Yes, sir? Five minutes after you hit the beach, you'll be a veteran. You know, Captain Hale, I never figured on anything like this when I was teaching English back at Central High. I figured that it was going I don't want to know anything about you, Lieutenant. Sir? Whether you're married. Got a girl, a mother, father, anything else? Well, yeah, but... Understand? Yeah, but Captain... The less I know about you and anybody else, the better I like it, see? Then I don't have anything to remember. Is that clear to you, Lieutenant? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now hear this. Now hear this. Proceed at landing plan O. Proceed at landing plan O. Good luck and God bless you. So they set us down on a section of Omaha Beach called Easy Red, and they said to us, fellas, Easy Red is all yours if you can take it. Well, we took Easy Red, and it was red all right after we got there, but it wasn't easy. So the lieutenant got us going, those of us that were left, and we began the march across Normandy. Correction, we got down on our bellies and began to crawl across Normandy. What are you stopping here for, Mallory? The crowds are up the other way. And then one day we got real dirty, those of us that were left. The oldest man in our platoon was 35. He was married and had two kids back in the States. He was sort of our unofficial chaplain. We all called him Uncle Roy. Sergeant Bell, where are you? Back to the heads, row, Lieutenant, over here. Well, we better get him on the run. Then we can take a breather now and... Sergeant. No. Yeah, it's Uncle Roy. Uncle Roy. Anybody else. Me. You, Sergeant. Not Uncle Roy. Want me to get his personal effects? No, I'll get him. All right. Look, a little piece of shrapnel went right through his wallet into the picture of his wife and kids. Mallory, what are you doing here? You know better than this. Bill, you taking time out to haul the weight? 
Never seen a dead man before? Go on, get out of here. We got a position to secure. You aren't feeling hard hearted. You heard me, Mallory. Move. So we moved, those of us who were left. But when we secured the position, the lieutenant made for the shack where the old man was using as a command post.
and don't make me repeat it. As far as I'm concerned, you can forget the family history. Sir, I only... Your attention, Johnson. Yes, sir. If you're as good under fire as you are on paper, we'll get along. If you're not, I'll reclassify you and ship you back to the repo depot. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, we're moving up. So I better tell you some things. You're getting the best rifle platoon in the Army. My platoon. You give them good leadership, they'll fight for you. And they'll die for you. And they won't let you down. And I'll have my eye on you. And if you foul up so much as a whisker, just once, understand? So help me, I'll feed you to the birds. For Benny. All right, dismissed. and Frank Lovejoy for a memorable performance of Warner Brothers' Breakthrough. Oh, boys, you know Groucho Marx, don't you? Of course. Hello, Groucho. Good to see you. I enjoyed the performances you boys gave. Now, how about being good soldiers and saying a few words on behalf of our sponsor, the Blebo Company? <laughs> how about it, Dave Bryant? I'd be glad to, Groucho. I've been drinking Plebo for years. I've always relished its rich tanginess, its tangy richness, its mellow goodness, and its good mellowness. Its heavenly smell, it smells to heaven. And how about you, John Agar? Well, certainly, Groucho. I've been smoking Plebo for years. Whenever I feel tense, I light up a Plebo. And I've always found that wherever people congregate, more folks are lit up than anybody else. <laughs> and you, Frank Lovejoy. Well, I always shave with Plebo because for their money-back guarantee, if you're not satisfied, you can get triple your money back by writing to the Plebo Company, Newark, New Jersey, Post Office Box 27. I'll repeat that address. The Plebo Company, Houston, Texas, Post Office Box 18. <laughs> and how about you, Tallulah? If you don't stop interrupting the show, darling, I'm going to get my double-barreled plebo and shoot off both of your pointy little heads. You have just heard an unsolicited testimonial by Mr. Lula Banghead of Montgomery, Alabama, second baseman of the New York Giants. And now, the plebo company, makers of money, relinquishes its time for a special announcement to radio stations everywhere. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Sunday extravaganza with the most scintillating personalities in show business. This portion of the program is the Sunday feature of NBC's star-studded five-show festival of comedy, music, drama, and mystery. Presenting five nights a week and brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The big stars on this program are Groucho Marx, Fanny Bryce, Ezio Pinza, Jane Powell, David Bryan, John Agar, Frank Lovejoy, Hadley Stafford, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, and every week your glamorous hostess, Miss Tallulah Bankett. my kicks out of being mistress of ceremonies on this show. Because my arrangement with Metro Golden Mayor, producers of the Miniverse story starring Greer Garson and Walter Pidgeon, I'm about to introduce a man who brought a new kind of romance to Broadway. Not the typical musical comedy youth with padded shoulders and the you can be taller than she is shoes. <laughs> Here is the kind of romantic singer who would appeal to us girls who are more mature. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. I mean, to you girls who are more mature. <clears throat> of course, of course, you know who I mean, darlings. A star of the Metropolitan Opera, a star of South Pacific, and now a star of MGM, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ezio Pinza. <laughs> It's enchanting. 
What a career you've had, Mr. Pinza. Or should I say, careers? Opera, musical comedy, RCA records, and now motion pictures. And you've only begun. <laughs> Why, you'll be going on forever. Oh, not me, Miss Bankett. I'm going to retire when I reach 40. Oh, well, I'm going to retire when I reach 30. <laughs> if you will reach a little higher, I will reach a little higher. All right then, darling. When I reach 31. All right, when I reach 41. <laughs> well, stop staring at me. 32. 42. 33. 43. 32. <laughs> 44. 31. 45. 30. Tallulah. One of us is reaching in the wrong direction. Oh, let's not play that silly little game anymore, Ezio. I understand in your new picture, Mr. Imperium, you sing to Lana Turner. Would you sing now for me? Well, yes, I could. Well, I don't like the way you said that, darling. Excuse the word, darling. If you sing it to Lana, why can't you sing it to me? Would it make that much difference? Oh, no, 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 of course not. Except that Lana is so much, uh, so much... Uh, Shorter than you are. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ezio. Under the circumstances, that's the sweetest thing you could have said to me. And now, Ezio, would you sing my very favorite number, and I really mean this, September song.
but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. The relief these tablets bring is not only effective, but often incredibly fast. Many of you I know first discovered Anacin through your dentist or physician. But if you've not yet used Anacin, we urge you to try these tablets the next time you're in pain from a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You'll be delighted with the results. Try Anacin on this guarantee. If the first few tablets do not give you all the relief you want, as fast as you want it, return the unused portion and your money will be refunded. You can get Anacin at any drug counter. It's spelled A-N-A-C-I-N. Easy to take Anacin tablets come in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family sized bottles of 50 and 100. Snooks! Oh, Snooks! Yes, Daddy! Stick close by. I don't want you to get lost here at NBC. Say, Daddy, look on that door there. It says Tallulah Bankhead. Well, what about it? What's a Tallulah Bankhead? <laughs> What's a Tallulah Bankhead? Mm -hmm. Just about the most famous stage actress today, that's all. Oh, is that all? Is that all? Who made such a great success in a royal scandal? Who starred in the hit play The Skin of Our Teeth? Who thrilled thousands on Broadway in The Little Foxes? Who, I ask you, who? <laughs> what are you crying about? I know you didn't. Tallulah Bankhead did. But when she's on the stage, nobody can even come close to her. When she delivers a speech, audiences don't dare breathe. You mean even her best friend won't tell her? No, oh, stop. I mean, she's so good, she's without an equal. What an actress. When she plays a love scene with a leading man, how she carries off a part. Well, which part of him does she carry off? Don't be silly. Gee, I'd like to be an actress when I grow up. <laughs> That's ridiculous. You're not pretty enough. You mean, I'm ugly? Well, uh, well, at least it's a clean-cut ugly. Look, stay here a minute. We're supposed to be our uh, contestants on Groucho Marx's quiz show. I'd better check up on it. Be back soon. All right, Dad. I don't care what Daddy says, I'm going to be an actress when I grow up, like Tallulah Bankhead. Say, I know what I'll do. When Daddy's gone, I'll knock on her door, and I'll ask her how to get to be one. Yay! Come in! Hello, Miss Bankhead. Can I ask you something? Please take those sweaty little paws off my happy Carnegie gown or I'll slug you one. Gee, you wouldn't hit a little girl, would you? No, but if you're as obnoxious as you look, I may boost you one. Well, get over it. What have you got on your chest? Nothing. I told you I was a little girl. I was right. This darling is obnoxious. I mean, what do you want to ask me? Well, how can I get to be a big actress like you? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, my dear. No one could be like me. Sometimes I even have trouble. <laughs> if that's all that's worrying you, goodbye, darling. Well, I want to be an actress when I grow up. Oh? Are you going to grow up? Yes. I should think you should be discouraged enough already. Gee. Maybe Daddy is right. I guess I am too ugly to be an actress. Your father told you that? Yeah. Why, the nerve of that man. That's what they told me. That's what my father told me when I was a kid. It really soured me. Yeah, it sure has. I meant at the time. Well, now, don't you believe it, darling? You can be an actress if you want. You're not. Ugly. Yes, I am. Even you said so before. And it's true. At parties, boys never call me in for kissing games. They don't like me. Oh, boys, what do they know? They know they don't like me. I'm ugly, yes, I am. Darling, as much as I hate to let my good side come out, let me tell you something. Now, you're not ugly. Not for the stage, anyway. You see, for the stage, there are many different kinds of beauty. Now, for instance, there's a delicate beauty. 
beauty. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's not your kind. Then there's, well, the uh, exotic beauty. What kind am I? You? Well, um, you have the kind that's known as um, <clears throat> ugly beauty. That's a kind? What I mean is that when a really fine actress plays the part of a beautiful woman, she has the personality to make an audience believe she actually is beautiful. In fact, many great people have had that ability. Who, oh, for instance? Well, take Abraham Lincoln. He was homely. But because he had such a wonderful, sincere personality, his homely face became beautiful to everybody. Now, do you understand? Yeah. And I feel better already. Oh, you do? Yeah. You know what? Only yesterday a boy said I looked like Abraham Lincoln. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good heavens, there is a resemblance. Well, well look here, Abe. Um, <clears throat> I mean, darling. Yes, Miss Bankhead. Now, don't worry. If you really want to be a great actress when you grow up, you can. Gee, thanks, Miss Tallulah. You're just wonderful. Mm, fine. Now, run along. You're starting to bore me. Good heavens, this child is obviously going to grow up to be another Betty Davis. Oh, Snooks. Uh, Snooks, there you are. Gee, it's Daddy. Oh, I'm sorry if she bothered you, Miss Bankhead. Ain't she wonderful, Daddy? And isn't that a beautiful dress she's wearing? Mm, yes. <laughs> isn't it? And it's so soft. Take your sweaty paws off my Hattie Carnegie gown. I mean you, Daddy. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. Well, well, come on, Snooks. I really do hope we haven't bothered you, Miss Bankhead. But we heard that Groucho Marx is going to do his quiz program on the show tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, that's on a little later in the program. Oh, well, uh, come on, Snooks. We'll wait over here. Say goodbye to Miss Bankhead. Tell her you're sorry you bothered her. And for heaven's sakes, pull up your guard. Goodbye, Miss Bankhead. And I'm sorry I bothered you. And for heaven's sake, pull up your guard. Coming, darling. <laughs> about 30 years ago. Of course, I was just an infant then, and she was a grown woman. And here I am, a grown woman, and now she's just a child. Hey, you know who I just saw out there? Fanny Ward. Groucho, that's Fanny Bryce, and that man with her was Hanley Stafford, her father. Fanny Bryce's father is Hanley Stafford? Well, he's not really her father. She's his ward. That's what I said, Fanny Ward. And speaking of Fanny, what's the things are doing sitting around in this dressing room? Why isn't he down here singing Some Enchanted Evening? Mr. Pins is not singing Some Enchanted Evening on this program, darling. Well, somebody's going to sing Some Enchanted Evening on this darling program, even if it's only darling me. Wilson with two L's. How about a darling chorus? <laughs> Please come. 
come close for a moment. How would you like to become a hero overnight? How would you like to be more popular than Santa Claus with your wife, your children, and your neighbors? How would you like to treat yourself and them to top flight entertainment of every variety, every day of the year, for years to come? You would? Then you have a date with your RCA Victor dealer. A date to pick out the RCA Victor television set that's perfect for your family and your finances. You'll have your choice of 18 beautiful new RCA Victor models of all sizes and styles. With luxurious cabinets, thrilling sound, superb pictures and television. Whichever size and style you pick, you'll get million proof quality. That incomparable quality which has made RCA Victor far and away America's favorite television. See your RCA Victor dealer for your million proof masterpiece tomorrow. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Metro Golden Mayor's beautiful and talented young singing star, Miss Jen Powell. <laughs> Jane, what's exciting out at MGM these days, hmm? We're all excited about the new Technicolor picture, King Solomon's Mines, oh. starring Deborah Carr and Stuart Granger. <laughs> well, I've heard it's wonderful, darling. Oh, uh, <clears throat> you know Groucho Marx, don't you? Oh, uh, yes I do. Then I'm sure you don't want me to speak with him. Uh, Meredith, how about some music for Jane?
No. But I saw you take it out of Mommy's pocket. So Mommy sounds like she's got a great pocket. Wouldn't mind me taking that myself sometime. Please. <laughs> Mr. Monks, you should have a little respect for my wife. I do. I have very little respect for her. <laughs> Particularly since I've gotten a lot of you two. Now, let's proceed. All right. I want to ask you a question and we'll bet $40. Stokes. Oh, you're going to ask me a question. Yes, I am. And I'll bet you $40. <laughs> Little does she know that I have her in my power. For I am the master of the quiz, and soon I shall have all her money. <laughs> Are you ready for the question, mister? Okay. All right. First pronounce the word T-O. T-O. Two. Right. Like taking money from a baby. Now pronounce T-W-O. Two. Now pronounce the second day of the week. Second day of the week. Now just a moment. Now this is the one with the catch in it. She wants me to say Tuesday, but the correct, the correct way to say it is Tuesday. But I'm sure she always says Tuesday. So if I say Tuesday, she'll say I'm wrong because it's Tuesday. So I'll say Tuesday. Wrong, we win. I, I said I mean Tuesday. Wrong, we win. Oh, wait a minute, I said Tuesday. Wrong again. The second day of the week is Monday. Take the money, Daddy. <laughs> are an actress and an orchestra leader. Miss Tallulah Bankhead and Mr. Meredith Wilson, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to the event your life. An actress, eh? Miss Tallulah Bankhead. That's a rather unusual name, isn't it? Which one, Tallulah or Bankhead? I mean, the miss. You're an attractive girl like you, not married? I am married to the theater. <laughs> well, congratulations. May all your dressing rooms be little ones. With running water, preferably. That's an Indian I used to know. Now, are you a movie actress? I'm an actress of the legitimate theater. The theater of Helen Hayes, Lynn Fontana, Catherine Cornell. Well, we have a few great actresses in the movies, too. Olivia de Havilland, Greer Garson, and tell me, when have you seen as great an actress as Betty Davis in All About Eve? Every morning when I brush my teeth. <laughs> well, what I started to ask you was, what play were you ever in? What play? Why, well, I have been in Let Us Be Gay, The Little Foxes, The Green Hat, The Cardboard Lover, The Lady of the Camellias, Rain, Private Lives. Pretty long title of a play, no wonder it closed. Now tell me, Miss Bankhead, while you're out here in Hollywood, why don't you try going into the movies? I have been in movies. I made a picture called Lifeboat. Lifeboat? With rat? <laughs> I'm your guest. I laugh politely. Now, Mr. Wilson, let me get to you. You're an orchestra leader? Mm hmm. Just what instrument couldn't you master that made you become an orchestra leader? Oh, um, most all of them, I guess. Well, when did you start your career as an orchestra leader? Oh, well, I started out originally in a little town in Iowa, Mason City, Iowa, to be exact. There are a lot of great orchestra leaders that started off in small towns. There's Abe Lyman of Illinois, then he became president, I hear. Well, there must have been before Petrillo. Everything has been before Petrillo. Yes, I guess so. Now, Miss Bankhead, let's get back to that Broadway play, the one with the long title. There was not one play. Those plays represent my career in the theater. Great plays by great playwrights. They were gracious enough to make me the star of their work and with whom I toured this country over. Acclaimed by critics, hailed by the public in every town and hamlet who packed the theater to the rafters to see my performances. Except Sapupla, Oklahoma. That certainly is a novel pronunciation. <laughs> what happened there, Miss Bankhead? Uh, <clears throat> Betty Davis. But tell me, Miss Bankhead, do you think I could be an actor in the theater? Anyone can become an actor, I suppose, but to be great, one must suffer. I had to wrestle with every part I'm after. I had to wrestle with every emotion known to man. Is there any method by which you can learn this acting profession? I use the Stanislavski method. Stanislavski? Constantine Stanislavski. Ah, yes. Good wrestler, that Stanislavski. <laughs> now, how about you and me doing a little wrestling? I mean, a little scene from something and see if I have any acting talent. Oh, very well. What do you know? Oh, not much. What do you know? Uh, what I mean is, are you familiar with the lines of any great plays? Not just some of the actresses. Now I know. Come up and see me sometime. Oh, no. Well, we'll improvise. I do this quite often. It's great training. Well, now, we'll set the scene in a drawing room in London. Penelope, the wife, is calling Cyril, the husband, that she's had a fallen out, she's fallen out of love with him, and is leaving him for someone else. English, 
drawing room drama. Are you ready? Quiet. Cyril, you remember when we first decided to get married? You said that should the one of us tire of the other, that one would tell the other. Quiet. Cyril, I'm telling you now, I'm tired. Quiet. I'm leaving you. Quiet. It's the quietest part I've ever had. Cyril, I found happiness elsewhere. But you, my pet, what will become of you? Oh, don't worry about me, old girl. I should probably end it all by leaping into the Thames River. Oh, Mr. Marks, it's pronounced Thames River. That's for the stomach, isn't it? I shall leap into the Thames River. Look, you jump in the river you like, and I'll jump in the one I like. Well, enough of this one-night stuff. Let's play your bet your life. Wilson, you can wake up now. Oh, I started off in Mason City, Iowa. And, I was... and now we're ready to play your bet your life. <laughs> and I see you've chosen first names of famous movie stars. I'll give you the last name you supply the first name. Now, how much are you going to bet on the first question? We'll bet the whole 20. Okay, Miss Bankhead? Press on, Meredith. Are you referring to his pants? Okay. For $20, what's his first name? His last name is Reigns. Claude. Right, Claude Reigns. Oh, exactly what I was going to say, Mike. I you took the words right out of my mouth. Okay, you now have $40. How much will you bet? $40. For $40, her last name was Palmer. Lily. That's right, Lily Palmer. Right. <laughs> exactly what I was going to say, my sweet. You see, you beat me to it. And how much will you bet now? You have $80. I'll bet you $80. All right, but $80, his last name is Clift. Montgomery. Correct, Montgomery Cliff. You now have $160. Yeah, I was about to say that, Mr. Wilson. You're too quick for me. <laughs> All right, you take the next one. Let's bet the whole thing. All right. Very well. All right, now, for $320, the movie actor whose last name is Stuart. What's his first name? Oh, I know! James! I'm sorry, you lose. It was Tebbs. <laughs> from our audience, a plantation owner and a young singer, Mr. Exio Pinza, Miss Jane Powell. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. A plantation owner and a young singer. And Miss Powell, you're, uh, you're the plantation owner? No, I'm the young singer. I am the plantation owner. Oh, so you plant potatoes and you plant cotton? I do. And I pronounce you Old Man River. <laughs> now, Miss Powell, what does a nice girl like you do for a living? I work for MGM. I can't hear you. Would you mind stepping a little closer to the microphone? On second thought, if I get the microphone, just step a little closer to the quiz master. Well, which is which? Well, the, the microphone has more holes in the head. Now, Ms. Powell, as you know, this is a quiz program, so uh, what are you doing after the show? I'm busy. Let me put it this way. I can get you into pictures. I'm already in pictures. Well, let me put it this way. Can you get me into pictures? I'm a plantation owner. Haven't you sold that thing yet? Oh, yes. Do you plant potatoes and you plant cotton? That's right. All them that plants have been so forgotten. So let's forget about you and get back to Miss Powell. Miss <laughs> Powell, how old are you? Nineteen. You call that old? Which brings us to Mr. Uh, Pizza. Is that the way you pronounce it? That is right. Ezio Pizza. Uh, how's that again? Ezio. E-Z-I-O. Ezio. Pizza. P is in pickle. I-N-Z-A. Ezio Pizza. Well, tell me, Tom, you must have had a very interesting background. Now, tell us something about yourself. Don't you think that Miss Powell is a beautiful girl? Uh, yes, I do, but I thought you wanted to talk about my background. Well, with a background like Miss Powell standing around, why should we talk about yours? <laughs> Alba, what is your background? How did you start out? I started out in Italy as a professional bicycle rider, and then I worked with the opera in Milano, and then I went to the Metropolitan Opera in New York, and then I became plantation owner in South Pacific. Good and all the job, eh? Well, all right now, are you ready to play your bet your life? I see you have chosen songs as your category. Cowards. Now, you have twenty dollars to bet. Miss Powell has seventeen, and Tom, you have three. Now, I'll sing the beginning of the song, and you have to finish it. Ready? Now, how much of the twenty will you bet? I will bet ten dollars. Very well. For ten dollars, sing the rest of the song that starts off this way. One. Is that all you're going to sing of it? That's all. One, and no hits from the audience, please. Oh, I know what it is. One dream in my heart. One love to be living for. One love to be living for. This nearly was mine. One girl for my dream. Of paradise. 
you know, I was wondering who's dancing her now. Uh, now you have ten dollars left. How much of the ten do you want to bet? All of it. All right. Then it's the song that starts with sweet. Sweet. That's right. Sweet. Oh, oh, I got it. Good 
night. Groucho Marx appeared through the courtesy of the DeSoto Plymouth dealers in America. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.